Hello everyone, this is Fargo 3D Printing and today we will be covering how to install your very own Ender 3 Direct Drive Kit. Here we have a Bowden connector, a PTFE tube, and an extension wire. Here we have the X carriage, extruder spacer, the hot end spacer, and some wire mounts. Here are the screws we have for mounting the hot end and extruder plus some zip ties for cable management. Here are some of the different extruder mounts and wire ties from past versions of this kit. The extruder mount on the left is the mount that now comes standard with this kit. Here are the tools required for installation. You will need 1.5, 2, and 2.5 millimeter Allen wrenches, and a small wrench, and a wide-tipped Phillips screwdriver. Most of these tools should have been included in your Ender 3 kit. Finally, you will need your filament unloaded from the Ender 3 printer hot end, and the bed cooled to room temperature before you begin. First, make sure that your power is turned off and the power cable is unplugged. Next, remove your glass build plate from your 3D printer if you have one installed. There is a possibility that the extruder or the hot end could drop onto it and cause it to break. Next, separate your wires from each other by cutting off the zip ties that bind them together. Remove the Bowden connector from your extruder. Afterwards, we are going to remove the fan shroud for the hot end. To remove the shroud, you will have to remove these two screws using the 1.5 mm Allen wrench. Place the fan shroud onto the x-axis gantry to alleviate the stress on the wires. Next, with your wrench, remove the Bowden connector from the hot end. This may take some force, so be careful. Once the Bowden coupler is removed, use the 1.5 mm Allen wrench to remove the screws. Make sure to keep the screws and washers from the hot end as we will be using them later. Make sure to place your hot end and fan shroud somewhere out of the way, behind the printer works well, while working with the extruder. The extruder is located on the back of the printer. First, you will remove the screw from the lever using the 2 mm Allen wrench. Depress the lever so that it is flush with the rest of your extruder. Be careful when you unscrew it so that the spring does not shoot off. Next, you will use the 1.5 mm Allen wrench to unscrew the last three screws. Make sure to hold the stepper motor so it doesn't fall. If you have not already disconnected your stepper motor, now is a good time to do so. You can also do it earlier in the process. Now, release the extruder mount from its perch. Make sure to set the screws aside. Once the stepper motor is free, make sure to place the cable side of the motor onto your left. Once the stepper motor is set correctly, place on the spacer. Make sure it lines up correctly. After that, place the extruder mount on with the Bowden coupler end facing up. Then, place the pan head screw that was in the extruder mount earlier into the bottom left of the motor. Make sure it is snug but not over tight. Make sure that you can also still see the holes all the way to the motor. Next. Assemble the spring on the mount. Make sure the spring is in the notch of both the mount and the lever. Then, put the screw in the lever. It should drop in a little bit. Using the 2mm Allen wrench, tighten the screw but be careful not to over tighten it. Over tightening will cause the lever to not move freely and to not hold the filament against the drive pulley properly. At the end, the extruder should look like this. Move your carriage to the center and unscrew the screws on the belt tensioner to loosen the belt. Remove the belt on the carriage to release it. Afterward, use the 2 mm Allen wrench and the crescent wrench to remove the wheel. Unscrew using the Allen wrench. You will take similar steps for all three wheels. Keep the wheel bolts all together. After the second wheel is removed, you can remove the carriage from the gantry. Place the top wheels on the new carriage. Make sure that one wheel is tightened all the way and the other wheel has the nut only loosely threaded on. This will make placing the carriage onto the gantry much easier. The bottom wheel has something special about it. It has an eccentric nut. This allows it to tighten on to the bottom of the gantry. 
Attach the bottom wheel loosely so that you can slip it on the x-axis gantry. Make sure all the wheels now are on tight. Now, raise the gantry to a workable height for you. See, the x-axis carriage jiggles a little. That can be fixed with the crescent wrench to adjust the eccentric nut to make it tighter. Now reattach the belt tensioner slash idler. Make sure the smooth side of the belt is facing out. Slide the belt into the carriage's holder. Do not twist the belt. Use the 2mm Allen wrench to tighten the belt tightener. Then test the belt. Next, head back over to your hot end and place in the new Bowden coupler that came with the kit. Screw it in and then back it out two full turns. Place in your PTFE tube, then tighten the coupler all the way in. You may want to use the wrench. This step ensures that there are no gaps internally. Make sure to have your hot end and shroud wires coming from the side and not over the top of the x-axis gantry. Take the washers from the hot end screws and attach them to the new screws from the kit. Take the new screws with the washers and put that through the hot end heat sink. Then, align the hot end spacer piece to the screws. Then proceed to attach the hot end to the x carriage. Next, take your fan shroud and attach it to the x-axis carriage. Attach the motor spacer mount to the extruder and then line up the space where the Bowden connector was with the PTFE tubing. Slide in from the back the long screws from the kit into the carriage and then into the extruder. Make sure to tighten the screws so it holds the extruder in place. Once the extruder is attached, we must attach the extruder stepper motor wire extension. With this upgrade, the stock wire can no longer reach the motor, so we must use the extension wire from the kit to attach the two together. Be very careful not to break any pins when attaching the extension wire. Now you will see that you have some messy wires. To keep them together and not look so cluttered, we're going to do some cable management. Depending on what comes with your kit, this will be easier or more challenging. With the cable shroud we had, we found success in using an Allen wrench to open the holder so we could slide in the wires. To place in the first cable holder on your extruder, you will have to remove the top left screw with the Phillips screwdriver. It may be difficult to remove at first, or you, like us, might need to use tweezers or pliers. Next, you will need the last long screw from the kit and the little cable holder piece. Place the screw in and screw it into the last open hole. For the rear cable holder, you will need the screws from the hot end that we removed at the beginning of the video. Take one of the cable holders and place the screws in using the 1.5mm Allen wrench. They will not screw in completely. For the final cable holder, remove the QR code sticker on the front of the printer. You might need a heat gun to loosen it. Once the sticker is removed, take out the screws on the left side of the case using the 1.5mm Allen wrench. Then, place the final cable holder mount in using the two screws. When you zip tie the cable to the extruder, make sure you leave a little wiggle room. You want it snug, but not strapped to it. Attach the zip tie to the wire. When doing so, make sure the cables don't get caught in the movement of the bed. Make sure to raise the x-axis gantry to the top before securing the last part of the cable. We need to make sure it has enough room to move while printing. Now, loosely zip tie the cable making sure it has enough room on both sides. 
Once you are confident in your spacing, tighten the zip ties and test to make sure the spacing is still correct. Finally, we need to remove the excess zip tie tails, so cut them off. As you see, the filament holder is now no longer usable in its current position, so you can unscrew one bolt and simply rotate it. Once that is finished, you are done and enjoy printing on your upgraded Ender 3.